there, thanks for joining. Did you know it's possible to travel, even now still? You just have to pick the right place. And one place I've been wanting to travel to for ages has been Nankuse in Namibia. I keep hearing about it, it sounds amazing, but I have been struggling to find a good overview explanation video of what, to see, what you'll see there and what to expect. So I was able to fly out there for a few weeks. Namibia is still open, it's very unaffected, so it's a good place to go to now. And hopefully now I can bring you back this full overview video of what, to, what you'll expect, what you'll see, who you'll meet, what the atmosphere is like, all of that. So here it is, Nanguse. One of the nicer things about the farm at Nankuse is the accommodation. You'll get your own tent, you might be sharing with one or two others, but you should normally have electricity and even an ensuite bathroom, but no guarantees. Uh, it is one of the more luxurious and comfortable accommodations that I've seen at a volunteering experience. And then you have the common area, known as the Lapa. Uh, so this is where everybody gathers, this is where they'll have your meals, where people are playing games, there's Wi-Fi there, so that's nice. And from there you go on to your activities. On arrival at Nankuse, you'll be greeted by Cornet. He will tell you exactly what to expect. The three golden rules, don't bleed profusely, don't get lost, and don't die, which I think any place would like to have. I'm Kurnay Darubay, I'm volunteer liaison and big brother, and also working in the bookings office. And uh, I've been with the foundation now for seven years. First day of arrival, you will be exhausted. Uh, you will definitely forget my name three times. Um, again, my name is Cornet, but um, just to get the first orientation, well, just arriving at the farm, just to settle in basically, because after a long flight, people are really, really exhausted and we'll give you a chance to rest. Um, and the next day you'll get a flamboyant educational introduction, um, presentation, um, that will explain a lot more than just all of the information that's already on the internet. And then after that, you are ready to get dirty. So one of the more complicated things, I think, is the structure of Nankusi. This is what I couldn't figure out so easily just by looking online or seeing what people were up to with videos. And the reason for that is there are different things to do at Nankusi which don't all take place in the same area. So the main center for it, where you'll go first, is the farm. This is near Windhoek, it's very close to the airport. And this is separated into, I'd say, three different sections. One is the small animal sanctuary, which is close to the general volunteering accommodation and the hangouts. The second part are the large enclosures for the bigger animals. So these are where you'll find your leopards, your lions, your cheetahs, etc. And then they also have a eight and a half thousand hectare reserve. So this is wild. This is where you'll do dry, you know, drive rounds, kind of safari style. Uh, there's all kinds of different activities to do in there as well. So there's a whole mix of wild all the way down to uh, small animal sanctuaries. That is only just the main farm. And then beyond that, you have a few other areas you can go to as part of the experience. So one of them is Neuras. This is where they have vineyards and it's a whole different experience down south. Another one is a clinic all the way up north. So this is more like a hospital. They actually look after people there. Another experience you can go have is up in Timbila. This is coming soon. It's a new reserve being built there now, but volunteers are already starting to go. And then there's the one I went to, which is Kanan, which is down in the, in the desert, way down south. 
and a new video is following this one right away about that. But uh, that's one another place you can spend a week and do different activities there. All of this belongs to Nankuse and you can sign up for programs. You can sign up to go when you're there or you can book them in advance. So don't panic even if you don't understand all of it. Now you'll get a presentation about all of it, but it's a large complex structure, a lot of different things to do. I've never seen a volunteer experience that offers this much before. Usually you're on a reserve or you're on a, in a sanctuary. This has everything and more because you can travel around the country as well. So that's a great part of this experience and I highly recommend going to at least one of these places if you go and stay there because you'll get to see a different part of the country and just something completely different. So Nankuse can obviously offer a huge range of activities given its very diverse structure, which is great. So that means uh, as it can host so many volunteers, we can break up into small groups and set out on different activities every single day. So here's a list of what we might call the more routine activities we get up to throughout the week. Really quite impressive how much you get to do in a day. So yeah, so far it's uh, changing quite a lot over the last few days and from people to, uh, to activities. And it's good fun, it's, it's so much happens every day. It's quite a nice change from, uh, from being so confined and bored at home all the time. So yeah, I think this is about the most opposite experience you could possibly have from that. So yeah, if you need to get free from the trap of being stuck indoors somewhere and you want to experience sunlight and people and normal life and a lot of activity, this is a very good place to be. There are still more activities you can get up to. So for instance, at the weekend, you can go for a town trip where you might you know, go to a craft market or to a nice restaurant. So there's just a huge amount going on. I've never been so busy at a volunteering experience. It's great for that reason. You're constantly active, you're constantly moving around. And I would just recommend trying to join in as many activities as you can.
Nankuse, or Nankuse as it should be pronounced, uh, really does have a lot going for it. It's set one of the highest standards I've ever seen in terms of the ethics of conservation and reintroduction of wildlife and, um, and its treatment of wild animals. The goal is always to try and reintroduce wild animals into the wild. That's not always possible with certain species. And in that regards, I would say they have some of the largest enclosures I've ever seen at any sanctuary um, for their, their captive animals. So it's, it's impressive to see how well they look after their animals, what they know what they're doing. Um, it's very clear that there's a, there's a strong uh, moral compass behind this place. So that's always good to see. And then the other great thing about going there is you are discovering so much also about local cultures but also about just international cultures generally because so many people go there uh, from all around the world. So you're, you're surrounded by people from all over, so you're learning lots all the time um, and, it's, and it's fun, it's enjoyable. So yeah, it's, it's a very varied and big enriching experience. I highly recommend it. People who do go there usually end up prolonging their stay or returning at a later time, which is always a really good sign. Um, yeah, so I recommend going for a longer stay if you can and then also doing one of the other different experiences. Um, speaking of, the video of the desert experience in Kanan is coming up and in fact should be immediately available on YouTube, so please do watch that as well. It's quite a spectacular place. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you now understand a little bit more about this place and you've seen the overview of the whole thing. And uh, thanks for watching, until next time. <laughs>